Welcome back, everybody. You're watching uh, Sport Federation TV every week. We talk about sport in the Western Cape. Uh, on the line with us, Boyce Lloyd, Western Cape Angling and Casting. B Boyce, just tell us a little bit about the age, the age groups. I mean, um, w when we go down to the beach um, on any given weekend, or let's say over the holidays, or even if you're driving down the road on the week, uh, going home you'll see that there's someone parked on the side of the road and they're out on the beach and they've got their rods out and they're, they're fishing and and we know of weekend fishermen people who fish even during the week who go and stand there for hours f fishing do, do you have do you have lots of different sort of age groups and uh, people who who come from a social perspective to get involved jp i mean absolutely when, when you join a club the club will ask you whether you want to fish socially or whether you want to fish competitively if you're fishing competitively you are then formally affiliated to western province the uh, governing body and western province will affiliate you to the south african um, governing body and then within our age structures we uh, at, at a national level you can be in an under 16 team and then in an under 21 team and then we've got our seniors and that goes up to when you get to 50 then you're in the masters grouping and once you hit 60 you can be a grandmaster but of course if you're a, a master and you're age 55 and you're fit and strong enough you can compete down in the senior yeah. league as well and then of course we've got a ladies uh, uh, group as, uh, as well so we really cater for everyone all the way from from young teens all the way up to uh, one foot short of the uh, grade and the competitive structures is it is it one-on-one -on -one? is it club versus club province versus province what's the typical sort of format I mean, this is, this is fantastic because there's really something for everyone. And that is uh, um, the clubs compete against each other. So you compete for club honors. The winning club will be uh, um, uh, uh, their top two teams, their points combined. The clubs organize themselves uh, eight person in a team. So you can have an A team, a B team, a C team, a D team, and an E team, however many um, anglers you've got. The, the two teams that score the most points are added together, and that will give you the uh, winning club. And then yeah. at a team level, you are competing against the other team. So you can you can win the club competition, you can win the team com competition, and then also at the individual level. You, uh, so beyond that, you are also ranked individually based on your individual performance. And then uh, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are other uh, aspects, for example, the biggest edible fish and the biggest non-edible fish. So really, there's something for everyone in there. So what are the, just from a fish point of view, when you guys go out there now, you, you've, I mean, you, when you throw your line in the water, you don't know what's on the other side of the line. It's going to land. It could be a, a harder, it could be a shark, it could be a sardine, it could be octopus. How do, you, how do you, what do you guys aim for? And I mean, how do you understand what's going to be on the other side of the line? Well, JP, it's, it's what I explained earlier. It's uh, what is the water temperature like? Right. Therefore, what okay. bait am I going to throw? And therefore, where am I going to throw it? So for the first thing, if I've thrown, if I've thrown a bait with straight nylon, it's not going to be a shark because a shark would have, would have bitten through it. If I threw a, a, a heavy piece of steel, it's likely not a cob because the cob will, will feel the steel and will, and will drop, drop, drop that bait. But it's a, you can pretty much, the way that a fish eats, did it, did it just boom, nail you, go flat? Oh, or did yeah. it sit there and suck a little bit and move off slowly? Did it move off fast? So you can pretty much, uh, with some and experience, you know what you're trying to get and, and uh, you'll be able to narrow it down and say, ah, oh, I'm fighting a flat fish at the moment or I'm fighting a shark or I'm fighting a cob. A cob, for example, it is just, it just shakes it in all the time. So your rod will be right. doing this and a dead giveaway, I've got a cob here. So as an athlete, I'm assuming you must be quite aware of your senses. You must be able to, uh, uh, especially the feeling, the feeling of what's happening on the other side of the line and you're picking up these triggers and movements and senses, the smell, the sights, the sound, but particularly the feeling through your hands. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 JP, our, our, um, in, in our master's grouping, uh, we've got Mike Bailey. He's a pro angler and he's one of our best anglers and he was the South African bass champion. And that's really, it, you know, and that's when you get down into those finer sensory uh, uh, understanding of what's happening with the, with the fish. And if you, uh, you've got to really be in tune with what's happening in front of you, what's happening in nature, what's happening with the wind, what's happening with the yeah. tides, what's the yeah. water temperature like. You, you, all of that is what you apply. I often say that the people that, are, that, that does the well and, and most in angling are the people that can organize all of this knowledge 
into a point where they say, I'm going to use knowledge from A, B, C, D, and I'm going to, I'm going to, going to, 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 to apply that. Let's talk a little bit about the athletes coming through the ranks there. You mentioned Mike Bailey, who's an absolute, obviously a natural. Um, in, 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 in the uh, uh, rock and surf side, angling and casting, I mean, you've, it doesn't just end in, in Cape Town or in the Western Cape. You guys compete nationally. But you've also got some big champs coming up in Namibia. Yeah, I mean, well, right now, um, in the, in the uh, first week of December, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the, the Proteas will be fishing against the Namibian teams and they, they will competing the teams that will be in there is all the way from under 16 to under 21, the seniors and, and the masters right. and, and, and the uh, ladies. And they're competing against Namibia. It's a full week and it's the first week of December and it is in Jeffrey's Bay. And then there's also, there's, a, there's an adapted facet, which is the international uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, a facet um, it's it's a little bit different to our rock and shore angling, but it's sea angling. It's called peg shore angling, where you don't move around. You get given a, a, a spot, and that's something that happens once a year. And it has just been in Tunisia about two weeks uh, past. Your event then this weekend, um, maybe uh, I suppose the last question is: Is it open for spectators? Can people come and watch? Oh, absolutely. We're, we're, we're on the beaches. If you, it's if open you to the see public. a guy that's in br <laughs> bright green or in red and they've got a, we've got big numbers in our back, Western Province. So my, right. my number is Western Province 854. The numbers are this big. You have to be able to be to be identified for, from, from a distance and you're not allowed to fish if you don't have in your back. So when you see people walking around with typically bright club colors, uh, red and blue and green with these big Western Province in their back, what you're looking at is a is a club angler that's competing in the Western Province League, and we'll be all uh, we starting six o'clock uh, Saturday morning, uh, likely from Strandfontein all the way in, in, into in, into Gordon's Bay. The one the one rule difference that we have in in the in the, uh, the December and the summer months is that on the Strand there's a large area from Shark Rock to what we call the fence, which is then typically a beach where you'll find lots of people. Not all of that is a, is a, is a swimming beach, but we don't, wanna, we don't want to yes. intrude on people that you, that's, uh, that's making use of the beach. So that area, we won't, we won't be in on Saturday morning. Boys, we'll leave it at that. We can't wait to find out more. Um, as you guys know, you've got a regular slot on TV, simply a phone call away. Uh, good luck for the weekend. Um, we're looking to see our athletes come through the provincial ranks, get protea colors. Mm. And I think, uh, yeah, fan fantastic to find out more about uh, angling and casting and rock and surf. And uh, of course, the values that you guys bring um, t through the sporting space, especially around the env environmental values and, and uh, fantastic stuff. And as I said, we can't wait to find out more. Best of luck. Thank you, JP. We'll keep the, uh, the guys safe tomorrow and we'll keep the fish safe. There we go. There we go, folks. Boyce Lloyd from Western Cape uh, Angling and Casting, specifically talking there about rock and surf. And wow, what an incredible sport and a fantastic way for you, if you've been watching, to get involved. So if you've been fishing socially, well, now you know that there's a Western Cape Angling and Casting structure that is able to, to help you find a club near you, join a club, get involved, and clearly listening to Boyd, uh, number of experts that will be able to introduce you to the to the world of uh, angling and casting we'll take a break when we come back we carry on talking about sport in the province don't go away <laughs>